So maybe today's video should be subtitled How a Railroad Entrepreneur Matures. Lessons learned by a newbie. How to get big and not go bust. Hi, my name's Brian. And about exactly two years ago, on this exact spot, I bought an abandoned railroad. And we kicked off the adventure that's known around the world as the East Terminal Railway. Well, the starting premise was kind of father and son buy an abandoned railroad, rehab, reassemble, rebuild it, and operate it successfully generating a profit well today at the two-year point I want to tell you about some railroad lessons I've learned but before we do that I do have some announcements and uh, I've taken notes so that I can be more efficient at this now I'm from But first I want to talk to you about, in uh, about two weeks, East Terminal Railway is going on a field trip. That's right, kids, get your permission slips in. Keep your grades up in the other classes, the other uh, YouTube classes. Those teachers get a little bit upset when we go have a field trip. They say, oh, Mr. Williams always has the coolest field trips. So keep your grades up with them, keep in good graces with them. But here in a couple weeks, you and I and the ETR Nation are gonna go on a virtual field trip down south to a locomotive shop that's rebuilding steam locomotives. I didn't know a lot about steam and honestly I still don't, but I've been there, seen them replacing tubes, heard about it, got a lot of good videos. That's a field trip we're gonna take together in a couple weeks. So look forward to that. It'll be on YouTube. Um, this coming weekend, which I think is November 4th, 5th, we are having a subscriber meetup in North Carolina in the town of Carthage Carthage, North Carolina, Eaterville. It's the big annual steam tractor train equipment show. If you like any of those this and live anywhere near there, this is really going to be worth your while. There's an admission fee, but there's so much to see and do. Remember, it's on two sides of the road. One side of the road, you may look through that and go, I've seen more than I thought I would see. No, there's more. There's a whole nother side. So, there's uh, probably two days worth of stuff to see there, depending upon your level of interest. But there are things that kids can do, adults can do, fascinating stationary engines, tractors, railroad equipment, tractor pull. Last year, I got second in the tractor pull. Maybe I'll throw a picture in here. <laughs> uh, so that's next weekend. I'll be there on Saturday and Sunday, and let's plan on, I will be at the the train display, the, the steam locomotive that goes round and round at four o'clock at the train station, four o'clock on Saturday, and let's make that 11.30 on Sunday. Four o'clock Saturday, 11.30 on Sunday. Now, why am I saying that? Graham will be there. Um, you can ask me questions about the ETR, why I've done the things I've done, what I might do different. You can ask me anything. Graham will be there. You can ask him what it's like to have a dad this cool. I'll probably cut that out. That just didn't, that just didn't sound right. Uh, so, Graham and I will be there, and you can ask us questions. So, uh, the, the third thing I want to say before I get on to railroad lessons I've learned is how much I appreciate ETR Nation and what you've done. It, it's specifically liking, describing, talking about ETR, and then if you look good in orange, you bought a t-shirt, you bought a mug, you bought... A you know, mouse pad, and that's been hugely helpful. That's what I asked for. That I'm thankful. I'm truly thankful. So let's go on to railroad lessons I've learned. ETR Nation. One of the first railroad lessons that I've learned is, if you're trying to resurrect an abandoned railroad, it has to be a good business decision. It has to be a good business decision. And, you know, I've written some of these notes out. Pardon me for looking down and reading them. But if you love railroading and want to buy an abandoned railroad for the joy of operating a locomotive, driving spikes, or working on maintenance away equipment, 
uh, drinking coffee in the caboose. Stay a rail fan and volunteer to museum or tourist railroad. <laughs> you can get your fix a whole lot cheaper than buying railroad and equipment. So what I'm saying to you is, first and foremost, a project this big has to make business sense. Uh, there's so many ways to be involved in railroading. If you're a rail fan, which I totally support, I am one myself, but there is a lot of things you can do without making this big of a commitment. How do you know that it's a good business decision? Well, it's not a dream, a hobby, or a pastime. That makes you a rail fan, and those are all admirable. But how do you know if it's a good business decision? Number one, you know your fixed costs. There are fixed costs that I had not totally calculated and was not totally aware of. Shame on me, and that's why, through the amazing outlet of YouTube, I'm sharing this experience and this knowledge with you. It's got to be a good dis business decision. you got to know your fixed costs. And you have to know your fixed relationships. When I leave here in a car, I can go on township roads, city streets, state routes, or federal highways. There are a lot of ways to get out of here in a car or walking. There's one way to get out of here on the railroad, and that's our connection with the regional that connects with the class ones. That's what I call a fixed relationship. You're not, you don't got to come in here and pick who you interchange with. That's set. That's already known. Um, another fixed relationship is insurance. It is less competitive than you would think. There are fewer people, companies, that would insure this kind of operation, and uh, you're going to need to deal with them. And I, I can almost tell you they're going to be the ones dictating terms. You're not. So if when I started, let's say the bakery said, we'll give you a hundred cars a year. We're using truck now, but we're going to bring everything in in refrigerated box car, a hundred a year. We would have had a celebration here on the channel because I would think that would be massive. And I also think that if they agreed to a $200 switch fee per car, meaning take the car from here, the interchange point, Death Valley, where it came in off the railroad, around to the bakery, pulled it back out for $200 a car. They did 100 cars a year. Do the math. That's $20,000 a year. You've just now paid for the insurance. No fuel, no wages, no taxes, uh, no related employee costs, nothing for the future, nothing for emergencies. There are so many costs in there that aren't even calculated. So in some ways, a small start is a terrible start. If you're in the railroad business, you got to be in it for business. You got to know your fixed cost, fixed relationships, and a small start is a bad start. I love small starts, but the stakes are so high and the cost so big that a small start is a bad start. Where does that leave the ETR? Here's where it leaves us. So that leaves us with this unique property. Not everybody's got a rail connection. If you drive up and down the rail lines through small towns, all the sidings are taken. Most all the sidings, many of the sidings are taken out. This property is very unique in that we still have our connection with the regional and then the whole rail network because of that. So where does that leave the ETR? Using our unique property and my unique mechanical skills. I love to source, buy, reuse, repurpose, rebuild equipment to operate a transload yard. We've talked about it before and I'm confirming that's that's where we're at. And I've spent like the last three weeks looking for a consultant that could help me understand transloading and determine the costs, the opportunities, if it's good timing, all of that. Um, I try not to learn lessons the hardest and most expensive way. Some of you are laughing right now. <laughs> I guess I am too. But a consultant for a fee can save you all that. Well, this week, I finally found someone 
that was talking the same language and understood what I was asking. And turns out he's an old friend. I'm not going to say his name because some of you may know him or recognize him. I've never met him in person. I've talked to him on the phone before and emailed with him. But uh, here's a couple of the takeaway points from that discussion. When the economy is hot, transloading is hot. So my friend who's got a lot of experience in the railroad industry said, when the economy's hot, transload is hot. And maybe by inference, when it's not, it's not. But when the economy's doing well, transload does well. The other thing he said was he would not touch a transload project unless there was a three year to five year contract. A couple times he said five year wouldn't touch it without a five-year contract. Meaning, you don't get all excited and start operations to unload a couple rail cars for somebody that's gonna test drive the whole concept. You want a contract, a legal contract that's strong enough. If they stop the contract, they need to buy out your contract. Maybe they don't pay you the profit for the last two years, but they pay your expenses for the last two years if they pull out. Um, I also, in the last couple of weeks, have talked with CSX, and honestly, if I never called them again, I don't think they would call me. To think that you're going to open an outlet like this to help them move freight and that they're going to like you and call you and help you, I think is a misconception. Sorry, CSX. Not You're not so easy to work with. Now, I've started a relationship with Norfolk Southern, and we're off to a better start. I, I think they understand uh, more like what we're trying to get at. The topic there is bringing material from Mobile, Alabama to Columbus, Ohio on Norfolk Southern. I'll keep you in the loop on that. So, kind of in conclusion of these thoughts, the other day I scribbled these notes and I'm just going to read them. I'm amongst friends. Here is the mantra or the new business philosophy that I have regarding this property. And I'm being transparent. Uh, YouTube's an amazing thing. You may not have the money, the time, the resources. Maybe you don't get out of your house a lot. But I feel like you're here with me and that's why I share with you how the ETR is doing, what the ETR is doing. Um, here, so here's my new business philosophy. To acknowledge, I can't control the world economy. There's a lot going on right now. There's some big changes coming. I know about it, I read about it, but honestly, I can't control it, change it, or affect it. And I've just gotta get over that. I can't control the railroads or the insurance companies. If I'm gonna play this game, it's pretty much gonna be by their rules, like it or not. You might as well learn the rules, adjust to the rules, learn to make money while using the rules. You can still make money, but you're not going to be able to tweak some of these rules. Uh, and lastly, I don't need this adventure or the income. Well, let me clarify. I want to do this. I'm still engaged. I've changed a little bit, but the truth is I didn't borrow and for that reason, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this. And you know what? Sometimes when you don't have to do something, you become more creative, more relaxed. You let it come to you. You make maybe less stressed business decisions. So we're still in the battle. You're still with me. We're going to keep chugging ahead. But you know what? I'm not going to get reckless and crazy because I have to do it because my life is adventurous enough and um, I'm getting old enough that I don't need another job. So I don't need this adventure or the income. So how's that play out? 
we would only start transloading with a huge legal contract that's three to five years in length. And it's got to be a legal contract that, that they buy us out if they stop using us. And that's just to meet the fixed cost and expenses that we started with to service them. Uh, be ready to completely retract and to be fine with that. You know, we just had huge storms in Florida. And if your house has a safe room, when you know the storm's coming, you get you and yours and your loved ones in there batting the hatches. That's a naval term, meaning you dog the doors down, you make stuff watertight, you get ready for a rough ride. And when it's over, you emerge, see what's left, pick up the pieces and go on. I've got to be ready and willing to do that. If we don't have a transload customer immediately because of some economic turmoil or, or global turmoil, I'm ready to ride it out. Uh, short term, but more operational, we have a track mobile that we're going to rebuild and sell to keep meeting expenses and to give us more push into the future. Those might be some good videos. It's the diesel 5TM track mobile. Uh, let's get it out, take some videos. I'll explain how it works, what its advantages are. We'll clean it, rebuild it, get ready to sell. And lastly, keep learning transload. Um, if that's the direction we're going, I need to keep learning from people like this new guy, possibly a hired consultant to find us some good opportunities. I need to go to conferences. These might be steel industry conferences or transloading conferences and I do now feel like I need to contact the governmental agencies mainly the Ohio Rail Commission which I used to go to all their meetings so that won't be new to me but I need to get some exposure and see what's available for resources of spreading the news that in central Ohio there's a transload yard that can help meet needs. Now I, I want to say, in the fixed costs, what that means is, what does it cost for us to take the 2021, push a car to right here, unload steel, at this point I'm thinking steel, load it on a truck. Would we know that cost? It might be $100, $1,000, $10,000. Whatever that cost is to unload the car and put it on the truck, that's the expense we need to know. That's what I'm driving for. What is that? Then, if they want material to come out of the car, sit on the ground a while, get reloaded onto a truck and sent out, what is the cost for that? Out of the car, onto the ground, from the ground to the truck. And then in the middle, what's the daily storage rate? That's where I'm headed. A far more professional and thorough understanding of what our costs are. Maybe today's adventure could be subtitled Lessons Learned. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed this wrap up. Not a lot of action, no whistles blowing, um, but it's where we're going and what's happening here on the ETR. Thank you all again. Uh, look forward to our field trip here in a couple weeks and our, our meetup this weekend. Now, that's the plan. Ch changes happen all the time. Plans change. My plan is to be there both days. Would love to meet you. Um, thank you all for your support. How to become a success with a small railroad. From here on the ETR, this is Brian. And for now, I'm out.